and welcome to Cliff Problems Parts A and B. Here's the problem, and you can find this in the same folder as the video. Um, right, so you can print it out and follow along here. Red Elk throws a ball with a purely horizontal velocity from the roof of a building that is 21 meters tall. The ball lands 17 meters from the base of the building. What time is it in the air, and what is the velocity of impact in terms of an angle and a magnitude? We're going to do parts A and B of this. The first thing to do here is to draw a nice picture of this, because nice pictures are nice. There we go. And the cliff is 21 meters tall. And this lands 17 meters from the base. And of course, this ball is going to start with a horizontal velocity like that, and it's going to follow some path that, a parabola, and land there, 17 meters from the base, right? And what we want to do is we want to set up our little suvat thing like this. We're going to go horizontal and vertical, because we can solve this, right? All projectile motion problems on Earth have a downward acceleration of 9.81. Uh, cliff problems are called cliff problems, or I call them that, because they have no vertical velocity, so that's simple. Um, here we know that our displacement is down 21. That's why these are negative. They're both down, right? And that, that gives us enough here to find everything, right? Horizontally, our displacement is positive 17, and our acceleration is zero, and we don't really know anything else, okay? Uh, since we know the height of the cliff, my favorite thing to do is to find the time using, on this side, s equals u t plus one-half a t squared, right? If we put the numbers in, it looks like this. That's with the numbers in it. And then we can put that in our calculator and get the answer. And there we go, our time is 2.069, and that's probably enough sig figs, 2.069 seconds. Since there's two sig figs there and two sig figs there, our answer will only have two, so four is plenty. The time on this side is also 2.069, okay, so time can go right across like that. Uh, the final velocity here we can get using uh, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. We could also use any of the other ones, but this one's nice because it uses these values that we already know. So if we put that in our formula, it looks like this. And there we go. And if we type that into our calculator, we get this answer. And there's the answer. Of course, it's the square root of a square, so uh, really what it is, is it's the absolute value of V equals that. Right, we know it's going down, so when we put this in here, we're going to say that V is negative 20.298. That's our final vertical velocity. It hits the ground going that fast. In the horizontal direction, and that's meters per second, in the horizontal direction, our velocity is just simply, all we do is use S equals U t, the 1 half at squared is gone because the a is 0, right? And so u is equal to uh, s over t. So that's 17 divided by 2.069, right? And this looks like this in our cap. So there it is typed into the calculator, and the answer is 8.2159, or 21, yeah, 216 is good enough here, right? And, and both velocities are that, the initial and the final, 216 meters per second, meters per second, okay? Now, we've already answered one of the questions. One of the questions was, what time does it stay in the air? Here's our time, right? So the answer to that question is uh, 2.1 uh, seconds in the air with two sig figs, right? And then the second part of this is, uh, what is the velocity of impact in terms of an angle and a magnitude. To do that, we've got to draw a picture of this thing. And when it hits the ground, right here, right before it hits the ground, okay, here's what our velocity looks like. We've got a sideways velocity, 
of 8.216 meters per second and a down velocity of 20.298. Notice I draw that arrow a bit longer than this arrow. It is moving over and down and it's got some angle here and it's got some magnitude. Of course the magnitude there is just the hypotenuse so that's the square root of 8.216 squared plus 20.298 squared, which in our calculator looks like this. That's what it looks like in the calculator. So the magnitude of that is about, well, it's 21.89, right? 21.89 meters per second. Or with sig figs, it's just 22 meters per second. Okay. If someone says, what's the speed of impact? This is, of course, the speed. The magnitude is the speed. Yeah? Okay. And then we want to find an angle. They want you to find an angle there, so let's find that angle. For this angle here, this is the opposite side. That's the adjacent side. We know that the tan of the angle equals opposite over adjacent, so therefore the angle is equal to the inverse tan of opposite over adjacent. So the angle is equal to tan minus 1 of the opposite side, which is 20.298. And I never make these things negative because I didn't pay attention in that math class. I don't know what it does. But I know there's something tricky about the domain and the range of inverse tangent, right? And that looks like this in the calculator. And that angle is 67.96 degrees, or 68 degrees, like that. Okay. Notice that this makes sense. This angle here definitely looks, since I made this side longer and this side shorter, that angle looks like it could be a 68 degree angle, so these things also help. So there's our answer. 68 degrees is that angle. I draw this picture, and the hypotenuse is 22 meters per second, angle and magnitude. 22 being the magnitude and 68 degrees being the angle. Alrighty.